Carlos Aiken, a professor in geosciences at the University of Texas Dallas. And uh, we want to utilize photogrammetry, LIDAR, and UAV uh, mapping to build a complete three dimensional model of the area. We're in Oklahoma, exit 51. This is a project with our LIDAR class, uh, 5324, uh, and we're here to map a slide area that collapsed and blocked I-35 a couple years ago. And we're going to map it the third time to look at changes from before, right afterwards, to uh, some time afterwards to analyze the change. who has his, his equipment up here uh, collaborating with us to do photogrammetry. And uh, we have our, our LIDAR system, a VZ-400 uh, that uh, Becky Aguilar is running, which will scan everything, uh, the rocks from both sides of the highway, build a three-dimensional model of the rock faces, uh, and we'll have it everything controlled by GPS so that we know where we are in three-dimensional space, which is how we tie the data sets together. We have global measurements to a centimeter or so accuracy each time we do this so that we can now compare the data sets. Just have to clear that because they they turn around here when they look at speeders and stuff like that. But if anybody asks anything, what you want to say is that there's cooperation between the University of Texas and the University of Oklahoma in mapping what's the, the changes here. And you can say it's your thesis to working with the Oklahoma Survey to uh, monitor what happened. That's how we coordinate, how we can know where the scanning is, because the scanner maps the reflectors, and the reflectors uh, will be GPSed and total stationed to position, so then we can determine where the scan is. Thirteen from the class, uh, and you guys took thir <laughs> thirteen, fourteen, okay, and about eighteen students. Okay. Cool. Bad deal. We happen to have been here before it collapsed. Oh, really? And then we're here right after it collapsed. Now we come back a third time. One of the students is doing his master's thesis on it. But because it's such a famous area, so we are capturing these things in virtual models. So you can go and take it home with you. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, examine it and everything else like that. So we, so we build uh, virtual models of these things. That's really, really neat. But this one is important because there's a thing called unconformity in geology where you got the rocks were horizontal and now we're tilt, then we're tilted. Right. And then rocks were deposited on top of it.
always, it honestly does not matter how we number the these. Yeah, I, mean. I always try and do it in a logical fashion, so when I go in and post-process, it makes sense. And then I need to mark here that my base is approximately here. Hmm. Okay? Doesn't have to be exact, I just know my base is in the medium. Now, we've got our rover going. We're letting it run for a few minutes to pick up satellites like we did with the base, okay? And then we're going to, I want the sun to my back a little bit, but not going here. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yep, so we're getting eight and six, so we're good. The only reason I watch that is just to make sure I'm getting at least the four. I mean, honestly, if the base is getting that, the rover's gonna get it too, but I always joke. We turned on our rover. Okay, so now comes the tricky part. Because now we're gonna take this. And there it says, okay, our base was started successfully, go to rover. Now we want to go to rover, yes. Okay. It's going to disconnect from the base. So if we were up there, it would say, uh, base disconnected. So now we're going to connect, and we want to make sure we're connecting to the rover. Click connect. Again, I've got it marked with its serial number, so it should come up saying base, whatever the base number is, and rover. You want to make sure you check rover. Ah, it's picking up Ozo's phone. Ah! Oh, we could hack it. Okay. But yeah, it's going to pick up all Bluetooth. We want rover 18323. Check. So I've checked it. It should... Okay, showing up here. Good, there's never a pen on ours. Connect. Okay. Bluetooth connected. All right, so we're now talking to our rover. Okay. So, what we're gonna do, this is the part where I have issues. Set up. Showing up here. Problem is, it still has me as autonomous. I want it to be fixed. If you go to system, it counts the satellites. So that's why you don't always have to count those. You can always check and say, oh, am I running out of satellite? No, I'm good. 